This is question number four in the level is medium. It is evaluating the definite integral and has to do with the method of substitution. So here we see some kind of a function that involves e raised to power that is not so simple. Uh, it's raised to the power of uh, square root x. And then in the denominator, we have another function, which is 2 root x. When we're using substitution, we have to spot the chain rule taking place in its derivative form already. Here we can visualize the whole bigger function as e raised to the power of uh, square root x, e to the power of x, and we can visualize g at x to be to be this here. So if we visualize that to be g at x, then f g at x can be viewed as this whole thing. If we take the derivative, then we've got because exponent uh, e to the power of x, but then we take we see chain rule taking place when it's square root inside in the power. So we've got two root uh, x that can be considered as g derivative x. So that portion can be considered as this portion. But trying to make more sense of this relationship, first let u be square root x. Whenever we're working with square root, we say, well, that's equal to x raised to the power of 1 over 2. du will be, that's just the power rule, 1 over 2, x minus 1 over 2 dx. And so rearranging all of that will give us 2 and we've got root x and dx. So that is entirely this portion in the denominator with this dx right here. Rearranging this will be 1, 4, and we've got e raised to the power of x multiplied by 1 over 2 root x and dx. We can have this as e raised to the power of u, and we can have that as du. We have to also remember, to, if we are to go with the second preferred method, as opposed to the first method, which is taking the indefinite integral and then substituting back in the original variable and then plugging in 1 and 4 intervals starting in the ending point that's given here based on the second part of the fundamental theme of calculus, or we can take the second preferred method, which is changing from the beginning the interval starting in the ending point to fit with our substitution. In this case, we've got 1 and 4, and these are equal to a, and that's equal to b, so we have to change them. So we will have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4. So when that's taking place, these are actually x values over the interval a to b. Then we will have u b square root 1, which is 1. And when it's equal to 4, we will have u equal to square root 4, which is 2. So these are our new starting in the ending point in line with this whole substitution. Now we're going to rewrite this as 1 to 2. And the moment we do that, we change the interval, we have to substitute our simpler variable. So it will be e raised to the power of u, and this will be du. e raised to the power of u, antiderivative is again du, already takes into care of this chain rule effect taking place. That will be equal to e to the power of u, and that is over 1 to 2. So you can see how helpful it is to use method of substitution now we've got we, we have we just have to substitute based on the second part of the theme, fundamental theorem of calculus. So we've got e raised to the power of two subtracted by e raised to the power of one, which is just e. You can factor out e and then say this is e bracket e minus one. You can write like that, or you can just leave it as it is. So to evaluate this definite integral, we can say that this is equal to this expression using the method of substitutions. Again, try to break apart the given function into the form of a chain rule taking place, substitute the variable to be some part of a component within a bigger function, and then seeing how the derivative of that is also embedded into the given function, and remembering to change the intervals. And then we don't have to plug back in the original variable, not necessary, just plug in the to starting in the ending point that fits with this variable, you get our answer.